and welcome back to the Welsh Premiership podcast and our second preview now on the Welsh Premiership uh, Cup, which started last weekend. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the games last weekend in detail um, and then preview the games this week in the second round coming up. Um, so first of all then, boys, um, in the east side of the draw, uh, Cardiff come away with a big win against RGC. Uh, what did you make of that game? Yeah, I expected Cardiff to win, but probably the margin of the victory surprised me a little bit. Um, not really sure where RGC are in terms of their preparation. I know they lost uh, in pre-season, but yeah, I'm sure after a few more games they'll come good. They've got a new coach through the door, so it'll take a while for them to um, adjust. Uh, Cardiff, I think they're, the, um, they're probably the best team in the league, as we said last week, so I wasn't surprised to see them win, but... The, the margin of the victory definitely surprised me a little bit. Yeah, I think we mentioned last week, didn't we, about Kerry Jones not having been in the job too long and that it might take him a few weeks to sort of implement his ideas on the squad. And I think that probably showed on the weekend. Obviously, I think it was quite tight at half time. And then Cardiff come out in the second half then and showed their like quality, showed why they were on the road to being champions before um, COVID hurt as well. So, and obviously we mentioned the the talent they got in their team as well with like Dan Fish, who's obviously uh, in the team to start this weekend now. Uh, Harry Millard, players like that. Um, that are just it was different. Just the difference going into the second half then, really, weren't they? Moving on then to the second game in the Eastern Conference and Merthyr against Ebervale. Um This was a little bit of an upset, a little bit of an upset, but we weren't really too surprised, were we, that uh, Ebu came away with a victory. Um, Boys, what was your thoughts on that game? Yeah, fair play to Ebu, you know, going down to Merthyr, tough game. Like we said last week, we probably would have backed Merthyr, but Ebu did look good this year, strong side, Greg Woods is doing well there, and that was a massive result from away from home. Yeah, and... um, the first half display, it probably could have been a, a bigger gap for Abu, but fair play to Merthyr. Um, obviously, the Chief probably had a word with them at half time. Um, probably said, you know, boys, this, this isn't good enough. And they came out fighting then. Um, but yeah, Abu did a really good job to hold on. And um, Lewis K. Williams in their dying minutes from the game. So it's a massive win for Abu. And that really. Um, Sets them up for the season now, doesn't it? And really sends a, a message to the rest of the teams in the Eastern Conference to say that Ebu on their day can beat anybody, anyone. And then in the final game then, uh, Pontypridd had a narrow victory over Newport. Um, boys, what do you think of that game? Yeah, well, obviously it's a really close game. Uh, Ponty getting the revenge because obviously Newport beat the season. I don't think it's too much between the two sides. And that last week I did tip Ponty to finish in the top two with Cardiff. And uh, I think that pretty much shows where both teams are, really. I think it's not much between them at all, but I think Ponty are probably slightly stronger than them. Yeah, and there was a big performance from uh, young Ben Bernal at 10 as well. I just wanted to mention um, he was obviously in the squad for the recent under-26 Nations. Uh, son of Justin the coach, of course. Um, I, I want to say he's only 18, 19 years old and he was brilliant. Um, I mean, he scored 14 of their points, I want to say, of the 19. Um, so, yeah, massive, massive game from him. Um, and, yeah, fair play to him at 10. Because we did mention last week, didn't we, that the youngsters, they rely a lot on youngsters this year, with, uh, whether that be boys dropping down from the Blues or... Obviously, the boys they've brought in um, that have been dropped out of regional academies, like, you know, like so Brad Roderick uh, that's left the Ospreys, Morgan from the Dragons as well. So, but at least that shows that they can rely on these youngsters. And they uh, moving on to the Western uh, Conference of the Premiership Cup then. And Aberavon came away with a, a pretty big victory against Tlenethley on the weekend. What did you make of that game? Yeah, it was a result we, we all expected, Abraham coming away with victory. But I got to say, I think Tanaki were in the game first 40 minutes. And they were level half time. And um, to a bit of a surprise to us, then second half, I think Abraham come out, showed their quality, showed what they're about, and why they contenders this season. 
Yeah, I think similar to the um, the Cardiff RGC game, really, it was it was close going in at half time, as you said, and then but Aberavon showed, yeah, the quality they've got, obviously the signings that they've made, um, you know, to bring players like um, uh, Joe Thomas is it Joe is it Joe Thomas mm. to bring players like uh, Joe Thomas off the bench with a you know regional experience, um, and uh, that seemed to seem to be the difference and. Yeah, Thanathalie are another one of those teams as well that will rely on uh, some youngsters dropping down uh, throughout the season. Um, but yeah, Abraham was just too strong in the end. Moving on then to Bridgend against Kamal and Quinns. Uh, Kamal and Quinns come away 38-15 uh, winners. What were your thoughts on that game? Yeah, so Quinns victory, again, another one I think we expected. But credit to the Ravens, like they were ahead half time in this one. Um, bit of a shock to the Queens, I think. And then second half, they regrouped, come out again, showed their strength and what they're about this season. I think they pack performed well. And they, well, we all know their strong side up front, but you know they they did the job this weekend and and why they're on course for a for a good season. Yeah, there's a bit of a theme going on, isn't there, with the the teams. Um... Yeah, well, it being close at half time and teams coming out with strong second half performances. I wonder whether that's maybe to do with not being like competitive match fit and not um not maybe not being as sharp. Obviously, some teams have had tougher pre seasons than others as well. So maybe it's a lack of rugby that might have done that, but maybe that shows that they the longer the, the more rugby they play, they'll get back into it quite quickly. And then finally on last weekend, then Slundervery come away 21-5 uh, winners over Swansea. I think that's a result we maybe expected. Um, Slundervery quite a strong team. Um, in fairness to Swansea, it's not really not really an insult to them, is it? It's not, it's not a massive um, losing margin, but they'd obviously have hoped to do better. What were your thoughts on that game? Yeah, so obviously they lost 21-5, but they kept the second half as nil-nil. Probably suggests that they're improving like they've only had one preseason game. I know Hand Every have had a few more. So it probably suggests that they're only now getting match fit. And they're one of those teams I expect to improve as the weeks go on, similarly to Planethley and Bridgend as well. Yeah. And um moving on to this weekend then. Um and we'll start with a Friday night fixture. We all have a, a Friday night fixture. And uh there's a big uh, East Wales derby as Newport host Cardiff. So what are your thoughts on uh, that game, boys? Yeah, I think it's going to be a good game. Um, you know, Cardiff coming off the back of a massive win last weekend. And Newport Kirk coming off, you know, a close, uh, narrow defeat to Ponte. But I think Cardiff will have the strength again this weekend, away from home and all. But I think Newport will give them a, a bigger bigger test this weekend. We'll, we'll see more about what both sides are about. But I'd back Cardiff to come away with a victory tonight. Yeah, same as me. I'd back Cardiff, but I think it'll be a really close game. Both teams will be really up for it. Obviously, local derby, two historic clubs. Um, seen both teams this morning, both looking quite strong. So I'm expecting a really good game, but I think uh, Cardiff will probably edge it. Yeah, do you think maybe um, Newport learned a little bit more in defeat against Pontypridd last week than Cardiff would have in their route against RGC? Yeah, possibly. But you look at Cardiff's team today, you know, so got some really good players dropping down from the first team and whatnot. So, I think yeah, I think you still have to back Cardiff. But like I said, it'd be a really close game, a one score game, I think. Yeah, very very strong team. Um, and obviously, game being played at Rodney Parade as well. There'd be some games played at um, Newport State Newport Stadium, Spitty Park um, this year as well. Could be the last time we see the Black and Ambers play uh, at Rodney Parade, which would obviously be a, a massive shame. Moving on then to the Saturday games and uh, the games in the Eastern Conference. And then, so we'll talk about a little bit about Ebervale against Pontypridd. Um, obviously, last uh, both teams had narrow victories last, last weekend. Uh, what are your thoughts on that game? I think if you asked me before last week, I would have said about Ponty doing quite comfortably. But after last weekend's performance and results, I think this could go either way, to be honest. I think Ebb will look very strong. You know, Ponty played well to be strong on Newport side last week, but I think it'll be a really tight game on either side could edge you. 
yeah, same with me, really. I honestly couldn't, couldn't tell you who I think is going to win. It's going to be really close. Um, I'll probably go Edward Vale just because they're at home and they're coming off the back of a really good away win. Yeah, I think there'll be quite a big crowd up at Eugene Cross Park for that game. They're really targeting targeting that game, trying to get big, uh, big support in. Um, obviously, we know what the Edward Vale fans like. They, you know, they like to make a lot of noise, like to make it a little bit of a hostile atmosphere for the for the travelling fans. Um, but I'm sure Ponty will t- take a few fans as well, and you know, they know how to make an atmosphere themselves. But um, I think. You might be forgiven for saying like Ebu might have struggled. Um, Reese Jones missed the game last weekend, obviously at ten, and he's a crucial player for them. But um, I've been really impressed with uh, Lewis Williams that stepped in. Obviously, he kicked the majority of their points last weekend, um, and obviously kicked that last minute penalty as well. I, I watched him play in their preseason friendly against Cardiff Met as well, and he was brilliant in that game. To be fair, as well as his tactical kick in. Um, Pulled out a nice 50 22 as well, which you know is always nice to see. And then moving on to the last game in the Eastern Conference, uh, Merthyr host RGC. Then obviously, both teams lost this weekend. So, what are your thoughts on that game? Yeah, I think Merthyr will win that probably quite comfortably, to be honest. I think RGC will improve week on week. Well, like a few of the teams in the West Conference I, I mentioned earlier, I think they'll improve, but I think this is probably a step too far too early on. So, yeah, I fancy Merthyr to win and probably quite comfortably as well, to be honest. Yeah, I'd agree with a, with a Merthyr win as well. I think after last week, the defeat against Ebu, I can't see them coming away with another defeat this weekend. They want to come back with a big win, show their intentions for the season. That's why RGC, like we said, I think they're still learning under the new coach. They're developing, trying to, trying to play a different way. And I think their time will come, but not just yet. Yeah, obviously, we don't see Merthyr lose back-to-back games that often, um, especially not at home as well, their second home game in a row. Um, so I think you've got to agree. And obviously, they probably had a little bit of a not dressing down in the week because they didn't perform that badly against Ebervale, really. But um, they would have been expected to win that game and, and they'd be expected to win this game as well. So, yeah, I'd agree and say probably a Merthyr win. But... Um, I'm sure RGC will perform a little bit better than they did last weekend. Obviously, we mentioned they only had their, um, a handful of friendlies um, against not really like top opposition either. I know they, they played two fixtures against Caldi, which are obviously an English um, like lower league side. Um, so, yeah, we, we, I think we'll definitely see a better performance from RGC. Um, but it wouldn't be surprising to see Merthyr come away with a victory there. Moving on to the Western Conference then, and uh, Aberavon will host Swansea. Um, what are your thoughts for that game then? Yeah, I think Aberavon will win again. I think it'll be a similar game to when uh, they played Penethi last week. Like like I've said before, Swansea aren't quite there yet. They're not quite match fit. I think Swansea's uh, big game will be next week against Penethi. That's probably what they're aiming to get a win in. But no, I, I think Aberavon will win by quite a few scores, to be honest. Yeah, I'd have to back that as well. Uh, comfortable Abraham victory. Again, last week, you know, they showed their strength in the end. And like I said, Swansea's side, who didn't have much for pre-season. They still have quite a few youngsters come down from the off space to play. But um, yeah, I can't see Abraham and, uh, losing that. And then moving on to the, the second game in that conference then, Kamad and Quinns are host Flint Every. Um, what do you make of that? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting one. I know they played each other in pre-season and Quinn's won quite comfortably, to be honest, but I can't see it being that easy for them again. And every bit for it. They had a good win last week. It's a bit of a rivalry between the two teams. Um, I've seen Quinn's team this morning. It's a really strong team. So I'm expecting it to be a really tight one, but I think Quinn's will edge it. Yeah, I think it'll be a, it's a massive game for both sides. I think it'll another be another tight game. I reckon Quinns Quinns will be too strong. I'm no doubt Clandavry will be there or thereabouts, and we'll give them a good game. I'd say Quinns edge it by by one score. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably agree with you. Um, Quinns do look at, to have a strong squad this season. We mentioned the amount of by like, ex-regional players they've got um, playing for them this year, with the likes of like Reese Lawrence, players like that. Um, it'd be interesting to see whether Angus O'Brien drops down again from the Scarlets. 
Um, had a good game last weekend. Obviously, he's a really good quality player for the for the Premiership. But like, if he's playing in the Premiership, he, he's one of the better players, really. Um, so, and I'm not saying that they don't lose anything with James Garland playing at 10. Like, he's a fantastic player in his own right. Um, but obviously, compared to a regional standard outside half, um, you know, it, it's different. But then, obviously, Angus O'Brien's not training with them full, like, all the time either. So, and James Garland's obviously used to playing with Lee Reese at nine. So, it swings and roundabouts, but you'd like to think they have a, a, a little bit of a better chance with Angus O'Brien uh, playing at 10. And then moving on to the, the last game then, and Clinethley hosts Bridgend. Uh, so what do you think that will happen in that game? I think it's too close to call, to be honest. I was I was surprised with how strong Clinethley's team was last week. They had quite a few Scarlet's boys dropping down, the two young scrum halves, uh, just to name two. But I think Bridgend will be really targeting this weekend for a win. I've seen their team this morning. They've got um, a few Ospreys boys dropping down. Tom Florence, Morgan Strong, who didn't play last week. So, yeah, I'm expecting it to be a close game, but I think Bridgend will probably win. Yeah, it's a massive game for both sides. I know it's a big one. If they both sides will be targeted to win, yeah, they, they think they have a good chance. But I think after last week's performance, um, quite a few changes in the Bridgend side for this week. Like I said, there's a few Osprey youngsters. Got experience of Matthew Jones coming back in. Half. I think Bridgen will be too strong and come away with a with a good victory. Yeah, I think there's there's been a lot of positivity around Bridgen, obviously with the, the players they've signed and the, the ambition that they've got. Um, but I think they go into this week with no like no excuses. No, they they have to win this weekend, really, against Tanethley, who a little bit undercooked. Um, obviously performed reasonably well against Arbraven last week, but um I wouldn't be surprised to see the same again maybe this week, a close score at half time. Um, and then Bridge End just so that show their quality then in the second half. All right. Thanks for watching uh, this episode then and uh, watching us review last weekend's action of the Indigo Group uh, Welsh Premiership Cup and obviously previewing this weekend's action as well. Uh, just to remember that Newport play Cardiff uh, tonight at 7 30. Fuck at 7.15 and all the other games will be uh, tomorrow at 2.30 kickoff. Um, our wonderful Tobias here will be uh, covering the Thanethly v Bridgend game, uh, offering live updates and a match report on the Welsh Prem pod uh, social media and website as well. Um, we might have some more games covered as well, uh, so make sure you're following us uh, at Welsh Prem pod on Twitter and Instagram for more updates. Thank you and goodbye.